I need you to roll a fortitude save for me. I, I don't like that. I don't like fortitude saves. Captain Wernsberg hasn't really shown his face. Just be careful. Some people say I come off abrasive. I don't understand. Maybe you trace my heritage down. I'm American somewhere. Yes, the character was told not to go to the plants, but he's going to the plants. Son of a biscuit, you're gonna get eaten. Smooth's in the general vicinity. I'll hear the scream. To put things lightly and out of game, I like my meat shields with an arrow blocking distance. That, that's fine. <laughs> that's fine. Manem is el chico, and these are my banditos. Oh, guys, don't worry. It's just some chico over there leading these bandits. They're just a bunch of ladies. Hi, I'm Cece. I'm going to be GMing for the rest of this combat. All righty. Go back in the wagon, Cece. <laughs> Surprise them all. I appreciate everything that you have done. We should be at Noor in the next few days. Things and welcome back to another episode of The Gate Chronicles. I am your game master and host for today. My name is Emily, also known as Snow from the other podcast, Sorta Online Odd. And as you know, this is obviously the better podcast, so you should listen to us. But let's go around the table and have all of my players introduce themselves. Hi, I'm Quentin from the Far Inferior podcast, Sword Art Online, but here I play Charles Smoot, 57-year-old biology teacher born and raised in upstate New York who is currently looking after an infant elk. Hi, my name is Jaden, and I play Finnevere Avere. He's a bard from Taba, aspiring merchant, and he's a fan of fruity toast. Hi, I'm Andrew, and I play Alan Taylor, the 20-something good-for-something from Ohio with a decreasingly kempt beard. <laughs> Hi, my name's Zach. I play Alfred Kenneth Mast, and, uh, well, I went wandering in the bushes for a bit last time, found some plants, and then we got attacked by mantids. After about a week of travel, the caravan was ambushed by El Chico and his banditos. The party assisted in fending them off. However, the caravan would need repairs, and according to Poply, they would have to stop in Newern for about three days before continuing their journey to the seeker base, Lamb's Respite. So, <laughs> the sulfurous odor hangs heavily in the air, and the lurching of your wagon isn't helping you keep the contents of your stomach down. Although, thankfully, no one has vomited yet. Uh, and most of you are managing to adapt to ignoring the putrid smell with each passing moment. But, as all things do in this uh, episode, this wagon comes to a halt as you reach the entrance to the village. You are all currently inside of your wagon. The windows are open. The back door is also open, so you can watch Cerulean. Yeah, I've got to keep track of Cerulean. Yep. All right. All right. Sounds sounds uh, pretty good. And your cabin mates are also with you, and you are simply stopped waiting. What do you do? You have freedom. The door is open. The caravan's no longer moving. Oh, smooth would hop out. Because okay. the caravan only stops when the caravan stops. The caravan only stops when the caravan stops. When you're here, you're, you're here. here. Ah, just smell that air. I, I can't say refreshing, but it is definitely it oxygen. Smells like new opportunity and body odor. Like Taylor, who hasn't showered in a week. Gotta love that ripe, marshy smell. You would, Taylor. You would. Oh, yeah, no, it definitely smells like a new urn. So, like, somebody's dead body has been burned uh, and put uh, into I a see. bottle. I see. Thank what you. They... Thank you for putting it into words. Uh, oh, so I didn't see what they it. did here. It smells like a not so new chamber pot. That's even worse than what I just described. Okay. At least it was sacred the way I described it. I, I, I like put my hand around uh, Smoot and Taylor. Listen, I know this is difficult for you American types, but if you would please not try to insult the locals with your regular banter. There was I, that supposed to I be. know things are different here. And you can be very abrasive. Wow. I like feel a, insulted. You don't have a hand on your shoulder. You're the most trusted of <laughs> <laughs> What does that say about the party? <laughs> hey, 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 hey. Sandpaper brings out a fine sheen in things. 
Or it makes deep gashes. Be on your best behavior. For me? For Finn? Benavir, I'm always on my best behavior. Oh, I don't like the sound of that. <laughs> but I suppose it can't be helped. Kelsey also hops out of the wagon with a uh, very nice looking cloth tied around her face. Yep, no, this is this is how it's going to be. Oh, you don't like the skunk um, weed? Here, I got something that might be able to help with that. I gesture for her cloth. Well, actually, no, I won't do that yet. I'll go into my bag and I pull out my cologne. You could put some of this and I'll take the top off so she can smell it. Uh, it might hide the odor a bit. M- I- Mr. Finnevier, I am not lifting this at all. This is working. Okay. I can, I'm, I'm staying under this mask. Okay. Whatever floats your boat. This is expensive anyway. I'll save that last part extra quiet. <laughs> all right, everybody. Well, with, uh, everyone's stretch their legs, I guess. Uh, probably don't want to go too far because the caravan's probably going to move in town. And last time I checked, we still wanted to meet up with Popeye, so... Probably don't want to stray too far away. We should probably ask when they're planning on heading out so we don't miss it. I leave. I, I, I'll, I'll break the party to, to, to find out when we think that they're leaving. Okay. And Smoot would just be tending to Cerulean the entire time. Okay. And then I'll go back to babysitting the Americans. Okay. So does everyone hop out of the wagon or are people sticking around inside of the wagon? I'm oh, getting out of here. I'm, I'm going in town. I should probably keep an eye on Taylor. All of you can roll a perception check. 17. 21. 15 for Finn. 13. As you all get out from the wagon and take a moment to inspect your surroundings, you all notice that the town of Newern, as we were coming over the hill initially when you got the first glance at it, you know that it's surrounded by a wooden palisade, a wooden fence, basically. There are also two wooden towers on either side of the main entrance, or what you assume to be the only entrance. The rightmost one has a man inside who is leaning on his arm, looking rather blase, but out towards the caravan, while the left one appears to be empty. You also all notice that Poply and several of her merchants are standing in front of the gate, speaking with an unfamiliar face, wearing a sort of makeshift armor with a crossbow slung across her back. So that's what you all pretty much see. Um, Smoot, are you staying outside of the village? Yes, he would be staying near and or by the caravan with Cerulean because he doesn't know where to lodge things yet, so he kind of wants to be escorted in. Just because of what I kind of get uh, with the tall walls and the wooden buildings, is this like spaghetti western looking uh, town? No, not spaghetti western. Okay, just wondering. No, no. It, it, um, from the outside, it's really hard to see anything that is inside of the walls. You do see that there are some relatively similarly structured buildings to what Ashby had, but you do notice that some of the buildings appear to have like a um, like a muddy base. Okay. You are with them walking towards the main gate because Poplai is talking to somebody at the main gate on the left side. Awesome. It's on the way. Mm-hmm. Couldn't be better. Yep. So, so uh, she's talking with this person, which you now assume to be a guard. Okay. Well, I'll approach and uh, see if I can catch her attention. All right. Good morning, Miss Poplai. She's talking with this person. You do notice, though, that she is surrounded by several other people a lot of the other merchants from the caravan who are appearing to be presenting some sort of like rectangular small wooden object that has like a little tassel on it to the guard. Can I perception check that a little bit more? Sure. Five? You just recognize it to be a small rectangular object with a tassel. Okay. You see like it's like maybe about a centimeter thick. Hmm, neat. Does it look like there's anyone that I could easily grab their attention that might know? It looks like uh, right now they're kind of busy. The guard is currently looking over these different little things that they're being handed and just looking it over for a little bit. Can I try to interrupt him with a quick question? Sure. Just real quick, if I could grab a moment of your time. Uh, when does the caravan leave? Uh, are you asking Popeye then? Or just anybody in there? Oh, I'll try to get hurt. Oh, yes, we'll be leaving in about three days. We have a few things we need to repair. The spokes on the wheels and also to get a replacement for, well, our unfortunate missing Orak. Understood. Best of luck. And we'll go on our way. Three days. Three days. Amali pats you on the back, Smoot. Hey, how's it going? Uh, It's gone. Are you just going to stay out here? Uh, depends. Is the caravan going to be moving again? Couldn't we find Poplar and, you know, get rid of the uh, cargo, the sales goods? Ugh. The, the, the marketables. I, uh, the I suppose, um, the, the problem is the cargo is being held captive right now. Uh, I, I feel like if I understand where it is, it should be acquiesced and taken away from its captor. He, he nods behind him and 
you turn and you see that Cece is in the wagon again and she's putting a bow on its head and it's just sitting there. All right, that's Vinavir's job. Yeah, I'm, I'm not touching that. He, that. he is the merchant. He would be the one selling it. And he told me to not Americanize anything here and to keep my mouth shut. So uh, uh, I'll go grab. See, I'll, I'll see if we can catch up with Vinavir. No, li- no, no, listen. I don't think Vinavir has the strength to tell her the bad news. Well, okay, listen. If, if I don't, and I you don't. don't, and he doesn't, Alan. Alan would kill literally anything. We got to go find Alan. Including her hopes and dreams. Including that little girl's hopes and dreams. He is the most American out of any of us. We have to find Taylor. After a moment, you hear like footsteps coming up right behind you. And she has the little toad in her arms swinging there. It's just kind of goes. It's so cute. It has a little pink bow on its head. Looks like she took the bow off of the snake belt and put it on its head. Okay. So I think out of game that... With grace and spice gone, this one should be sugar. (laughs) (laughs) All right, I'm ready for an adventure in town. Oh, you're not taking that thing in town? Why not? That's contraband. No, this is Patrick. (laughs) (laughs) You paused and you thought long and hard and you could come up with nothing. So we paused and waited just to be spoon fed the same exact meme. (laughs) We all knew it was coming. That's a Toto. No, he's Patrick. 10 out of 10. Would listen to meme again. It says Patrick now. No, this is Patrick. (laughs) <laughs> I can't, you're not. This is officially bad. Amali, two things. It's been named as a problem. One, you let her name it. Two, you let her name it Patrick. She's not the, uh, he just stops before he says anything else. I think it's a great name. Patrick. Yep. Exactly. It is a perfect name, Patrick. It's fine. Look at Patrick. He's so good. Yeah, until he bites someone and paralyzes them. He's been well behaved as long as he's fed well and he just, he gets happy. Look at those little happy grunts. Amali, you're the handler. I'm, I'm just a guest. I'm, I'm gonna go that way. That Smoot Please. just walks off. Please don't leave. No. <laughs> he's Smooth. just like reaching out. Well, that was, um. Oh, whoa. Interesting. I swear you're a ninja. I've been here the entire time. You don't speak. I don't hear footsteps. I don't know what you want from me. Oh, I mean, to be fair, I was standing on the side of the wagon waiting because, yeah. Well, anyway, uh, uh, what's the plan? Uh, well, if we're going to be here for a while, let's familiarize ourselves. Finnevere got here too. Oh, I see you're back. I didn't hear even hear Finnevere's steps. I only took two steps to the side to talk to Poplai. Oh, by the way, we're leaving in three days. That's like... Oh, we're going to be here a while. Two steps to him is like 30 yards to me. Yeah, I know. He must have really long legs. I didn't, Those are you, really you, long. I mean, the dimensions don't seem right. That's impressive. It was a metaphor. Oh, okay. A metaphor um, of long legs. All right, legs. well, we, we need to find an American to crush a small girl's hopes and dreams. Uh, someone I, more... I, I, like, size him up with my hands, like... So, someone more American than uh, me. No, Finevere, she's called it Patrick. And it has a bow on its head. Oh, no, that's so cute. <laughs> I can't do it. The only person I know with enough fervor and bloodlust to eat a small animal is in that village. <laughs> I I see why you're disturbed, but every time I see her, I see everything that I couldn't do growing up, and I just, I don't think that I could do that. Raise uh, a poisonous not, animal and care for it and not die to it? That's not impressive. Die, uh, not die I mean, part's the trick. In all fairness, when I tried that, it was a snake, and I was quickly shot down by Sid, but... You keep saying Sid. Is this your father? Sid is my landlord. Your landlord shot you down for a snake? That makes sense. They shoot a lot of people down. Wow, wait. I hope they don't shoot people. That'd be concerning. Normally just landlords have like tenant restrictions, which says you can't have pets. Alrighty. Let's go, Patrick. No, that that, that thing, that is not coming into town. You just turn and you see Amali. His hands are covering his face. Amali, what kind of guardian are you? She's really convincing. Well... She wait, has done wait, such an no. amazing job at taking care of it so far. <laughs> Cece, stay there. I'm going to convince everyone we're going to let you in town. And I, and I motion for everyone except her to huddle around. I, Roll I motion, a perception check. 19 on perception. I'm rolling, I'm rolling stealth to whisper as I motion for everyone to huddle around. Okay, she's making little kissy faces at Patrick. Patrick is also somehow making kissy faces back. I don't know how that works. I rolled really well. 
So a 15 on stealth. Okay, you're whispering. Okay, so listen, nothing would get Taylor more irate and prepared to crush a little girl's dreams than if we let her walk into town with it and we all act super nonchalant. You think Taylor is going... Oh, I'm sorry, that's... um. <clears throat> That was a little loud. A little I wasn't loud. expecting that. Uh. Taylor already said he wanted to kill it. He said he wanted to get rid of it and get it out of our hair. If anyone can crush a little girl's dreams, it's that man. All right, now listen. We just have to act like everything's I all right. I think that Taylor might get himself into trouble if he does that. No, you just oh, tell her to get rid of it and then we'll oh, sheepishly chime in. Well, in the likely scenario that Don't it gets- mention the sheep. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was a figure of speech. It was a figure of speech. We have Cerulean. He's the new mascot. We can get rid of the very dangerous, poisonous, venomous thing. <gasps> oh my gosh, are we going to feed Cerulean to Patrick? <laughs> no! I just paid good money for that elk! Wow, I can't... Why help. are you here? Oh. I told you to stay over there! I heard something about sheep. N- n- no, I said Patrick Meeps. Hey. <laughs> Boyden Gates, uh, we're heading into town, CC. All right, let's... Go! I'm so excited! We've been stuck in a wagon for so long. If anyone asks, that's an iguana. <laughs> no. <laughs> this is Patrick! Yes, Patrick the right, iguana. So you guys start making your way into town nonchalantly. Um, <laughs> yep, Alan Z. <laughs> I guess that would be a bluff if you're trying to be nonchalant and you're not not nonchalant. Sure. And we'll come back to you guys in a moment. So, for Mest and Alan Taylor, you guys enter into the town. You both, as you go in, you see that people from around the village seem to have gathered near the entrance, many of whom are looking onward excitedly towards the wagons, while some seem to take notice of you and begin to nervously gossip and gesture in your direction. The villagers are dressed in garb similar to what those in Ashby wore, with some slight variations. Most of the women have their hair tied up out of the way, in braids or just in like a ponytail. Almost everyone seems to be wearing tall boots up to their knees and a good number of folks are muddied. Many buildings are centralized on a dry hill overlooking what appears to be homes on pylons and wooden docks. And many of the buildings appear to be crafted from both wood and cement like mud, which you make note of some adults using their hands to spread over top a beam before placing it. From what you see, the community appears to be thriving. And also, as you walk in, you notice that to the right, just past some houses, the wall, which originally when you came in, you noticed that it went, you know, straight out towards the right. Instead, there's part of the wall that cuts inward towards part of the village. Uh, For Alan Taylor, you also notice that towards the back of the village, just glimpsing just a little bit, it appears to be that some of the wall might be missing. And on that right side, where that fence, like the wall is, you notice that there also appears to be a secondary gate leading to another location. And also a faint, sweet aroma that cuts through the terrible odor on your left. I make my way towards the sweet aroma. Okay. So you head left. I smell potentially baked goods. You do smell potentially baked goods. Who knows how potentially baked these goods could be? And you follow after, or what do you do? Yeah, I would just follow after. All right, he's keeping a close eye on you. Are you going to skulk around behind me the whole time, or are you going to walk with me? Who said I was skulking? You're messed. You skulk. I don't skulk. It's it's kind of how you walk, bud. I don't skulk. I sully. (laughs) Oh, no. (laughs) That Uh, means skulking, bud. No, 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 no. Alan, as your focus is towards Alfred Kenneth Mest, you feel something bump into you. 16 perception. What did, what, what did I bump into? Oh, excuse me, sir. Sorry about that. Oh, that's all right. Wait a minute. He runs off. I chase him. <laughs> you just start chasing Why? a kid? I, I'm, I'm pretty sure I was just mugged. While, while, while I'm chasing him, I'm going to check my pockets. Okay. You seem to have everything on you. Nothing seems to be missing. Wow, did you just assume a child stole Cynical from Americans. you? Cynical Americans. What about my Americans. Seeker's emblem? Your Seeker's emblem? It's still on you. If he chased after the small child, I would not have continued chasing after him. How do you react just to see him running after a child? I'm sure he'll be fine. Is the child... I, I, I wish to roll... Sen- da, 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 da. I want to roll sense motive on the child on whether or not he looks like he's running guiltily or not. He starts skipping. I will cease chasing him. Okay. Uh, let's see. How far did you run? Because you were... Okay. 
I, I want to deeply inspect my person and make sure that there is nothing missing. Sure, you deeply inspect yourself, and you're fine. Everything is there where it should be. Okay. You find yourself in a place surrounded by lots and lots of food stalls. And by lots, I mean like five. That, that That's like an amount amount. Is there a fresh fruit stall? Fresh fruit. Um, There are no fruit stalls that you can see. What about meat? As you peruse around, you do see that there happens to be a stall that has kebabs of some kind on it, like skewered things. I wish to approach the stall. Okay. All right. You approach the stall. There is a young lad who is behind it manning the station. Oh, there. Oh, hello, sir. How can I help you? How much for a kebab? Two copper. Uh, I'll take two. He reaches into a small, like, uh, holder, and he pulls up two kebabs, which appear to be some kind of strange creature's leg. Meat is meat. Meat is meat. Hey, I, I, I take them, mm -hmm. and I start eating one. And you gave him your money? Yeah. Okay. You okay. eat one. I give him the four copper. Thank you, kindly, sir. I look around for Mest. He is no longer behind you. Mest, what are you up to? I started wandering around, see if I could find any shops or anything. I probably would have continued in the original direction we were going before he ran off to chase the child. Okay. He'll be fine. It, it, I'm sure he'll be fine. Moments after you basically say that, the rest of you come through the gate. And you see a very similar sight. There's a bunch of people standing at the main gate. And Smoot, you notice in the crowd there appears to be... A well-dressed man who seems to be speaking with several armed individuals. And he looks over and he catches your eye. Or you catch his eye. You know, not like, not romantically, I promise. He noticed you. He noticed you. That is the term. You guys make eye contact and he seems to turn abruptly and faces towards you. And the crowd moves out of his way as he comes forward. And all of a sudden you hear a sort of band going off. I don't know what's happening to me. <laughs> <laughs> I thought this day couldn't get any worse. What is this voodoo magic? Uh, <laughs> it's like the serious character that's getting dragged into a Disney song. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So a man who is more well-dressed than the others steps out from the crowd. He is wearing a rich violet and gold tunic overlaid with a fur coat trimmed with cuff sleeves and a belt at his waist that seems to be stretched to its limit as it holds back his rotund belly. The few hairs on his head are slicked down, and they have a greasy sheen to them. With a large smile on his face, he approaches you. Welcome, welcome, travelers to New Arden Village. I am Mayor Hambo Gimber. I offer salutations and hospitality. You seem to be somewhat overwhelmed by your surroundings, <laughs> but no fear, I would be happy to show you to our local inn. He does a little bow. Wow, this is weird. How generous of you, Mayor Hamburger. He looks like he's eaten a few hamburgers. How do you spell that? <laughs> oh. That's a real good question, Benavir. Hambul is H A M B L. Gimber is G-I-M-B-E-R. Very good. Well met. I can't believe I, That was not on purpose. You finally do notice that there seems to be a band, like, behind the crowd, like, playing fervently, like, trying to keep up. And they're, like, starting to walk and follow him. Um, Mess, this does catch your attention, by the way. Nope, nope, don't trust that voodoo magic song. Nope, going this way. Uh, are you going to move? Are you him, or are you going to look for Taylor? Uh... I mean, we could spend all day looking for Taylor. Oh, we have three days. I'm sure we'll keep. We'll meet up. Yeah, but How much trouble could he possibly get into? I'm, I'm kind of worried about him, but I'm also kind of worried about the iguana we have with us. I see that you are wearing very strange clothes. Are you looking for anything new in the town? Village that we are. Uh, Although I, we will become a town soon after all, we'll be getting our certification. <laughs> uh... Last time I checked, clothes require currency, and uh, these jeans are very well loved. He signals uh, for the band to stop playing. Is there a place in town to get finer wares such as uh, what you have? Of course, we have a very fine market. Uh, however, he just pauses. Yes, well, welcome to New Hern Village. And yada, 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 and stuff, and he walks away. Ah, that's how we deal with him. Just let him know that you don't have any money. And you can't feel, feed the homeless. 
I definitely couldn't feed that man. What do you mean we don't have money? Shh, don't let them know you have money. That's when Are they we don't... poor? Yes, we are very poor, Cece. And no, we do not want anyone washing our car's windows. Isn't that Mr. <laughs> huh? Mr. Smoot, what? I'm sorry, it's just an old habit. Just don't drive through New York City. Oh, I've never been to New York. I've never been to New York either. Where's New York? Uh, don't, don't worry about it. It's not that pretty. Uh, it's like York, but newer, but not as pretty. Cece, don't worry about it. They're from a uh, far, far away place. Very far away. Huh, interesting. I will find out about this New York, and I will learn more about it, and then we'll visit it. There's a library at Lambs Respite. Hey, isn't that Mr. Mest who's quietly trying to scurry away over there? Hey, Mest, stop skulking over <laughs> no, there. No, no, I'm sorry. I heard the music and immediately went, nope, we're going this way. That's exactly how I felt. <laughs> I couldn't <laughs> get away. I'm too big to fade into a crowd, though. <laughs> hey, Mest, quit skulking over there and join us. Where'd, where'd Taylor run off to? Darn it, I heard them. Uh, <laughs> but you can pretend like you didn't. <laughs> now the question is, how incriminatingly do you describe my actions? Uh, I'll s- proceed to start walking back over to the group, and I'll just say, Ah, uh, Taylor went that way, chasing off after a small child. We haven't been in town for more <laughs> than three minutes, but he is doing what we're looking for him for, but wrong child's dreams that he's probably crushing. Okay. okay. So we wait an hour and listen for the commotion, and then we'll find Taylor there. What's oh, going on? Best, have you met Patrick? I'm just going to peer around smooth, so Mess just, like... Head meh. tilt. Yep, yep. That's, just, like, complete vertical to horizontal turn. Yep. Yes. Yeah. No, this is Patrick. Oh, so we're keeping it, then. <gasps> he we is, are? He's accompanying... Well, you've named it. He's accompanying us. I'm so happy we get to keep Patrick. Uh, Here I was worried I'd have to get rid of him, because, to be fair, you are right. He is a little poisonous. I think he knocked me out yesterday. I don't, this, what? This is a safety hazard. I'm, Hold I, I'm very sorry, CC. Speed record recovery. I wonder if the more bites you get, the more immune you are. Mest, Mest immediately proceeds to go check on on CC. Oh, I'm perfectly Where, fine. Where's the bite? It uh, wasn't a bite. He spit in my mouth. <laughs> Smoot leans over to Amali. There's just a little bit of concern on on Alfred's face. There's a lot of concern on Amali's face. How did this Smoot happen? Smoot leans over wagon. to Amali. Were you letting her French kiss a lizard? How did this happen? I am like shocked that the term venomous poisonous actually turned out to be true. <laughs> And then uh, you just hear somebody vomiting behind you. Uh, it's, it's probably... Uh, how do you... Okay, hold on. Kelsey, you don't happen to have another cloth cloth through you. I, I, I have, do you need one? I have one. He, he reaches out his hand, like grasping uh, okay. it there. I, I'll get it out. He, he, he grabs it and okay. covers his mouth. <gasps> just didn't help that much, but at least I don't think I'll vomit anymore. Oh, I'm so sorry for whatever came out of my stomach onto the ground. Is the smell bothering you? No, oh, it's definitely not the smell. It's clearly just my environment, which it, is the smell. It might be the name Patrick. I think it's a great name. Oh, God, not you two. <laughs> so have I found them yet? Because I went looking for him after I got food. You hear the sound of Patrick in the air. <laughs> You just hear it, like, echo almost. The meep that transcends all. I'm sure the meep has a different effect on him than us. Because he was like PTSD bit by meep. triggering. It instantly activates his fight reflex. There is no flight. Yeah, you just, like, take a fight stance in the middle of, like, the market. <laughs> Are you all right, sir? Do you need, do you need help? It exists. Uh, and I move towards the sound. <laughs> it exists. <laughs> <laughs> what a way to enter conversation with an individual. You guys do see... Alan Taylor, is he running? How did he come approach? Somewhat aggressively speed walking. <laughs> speed walking. Speed so walking. You see Alan Taylor speed walking aggressively with a scowl on his face towards you. So, uh, uh, three days. I hate this village. Why? What's wrong with this village besides, you know, the obvious? The obvious is the problem. Oh, you get used to it. <sighs> uh, and then there's the less obvious, which is worse. What's less obvious? And why is it worse? Well, I was talking around the caravan, and it seems that this soon-to-be town is going to be more of a Taijin settlement, not sooner rather than later. And if I get any interpretation from that man's uh, speech about how soon this will become a town and how happy he is about it, it sounds more like a government funding type thing. So, 
not super stoked about that. Let's just hope that uh, a well-known captain of ours uh, doesn't have any influence here then. Uh, and we should probably lay low yeah. with the Patrick. You want to sleep with Patrick? At no! Listen, what you and that <laughs> lizard do in your free time are, is none of my business. I'm just saying keep it cut in. He's actually really great at snuggling. The best. Good job, Patrick. Beep. Oh, I want to explore. If they're not going, I will I will montage my way through this. I don't have to go everywhere. And now I must search for the lizard. Where Where do you go? Do you go left or right? Because uh, you're kind of standing towards the left of the gate right now because you met up with Alan and Mest. Uh, it sounds like the markets are left, but uh, I'm more interested in what's right because uh, that's another entrance and, you know, exits are nice to know how they are and what it takes to get through them and whatnot, especially if violent things were to happen very quickly. So, yes, I'd like to explore the right. Okay, so you suggest the party going to the right? Yeah, I was like, see what, let's see what's going on over there. Does any other character have a suggestion that they make? No, nothing has intrigued him. No one else smells the sweet aroma of food. Smoot is just actively trying to keep his very large frame in between everyone's eyes and Patrick. Uh, okay. Uh, as you guys start making your way to the right, uh, you hear the band strike up again, and you also see Poplai entering to the village. Ooh, this will be good. Yep. So, <clears throat> Mayor Hamble, Gimber, ha- ha- Hamble's on over there. I know it's Amble, but listen. He hambles his way on over there, and uh, he strikes up a conversation with Popfly. And yes, this is this is how it's going to go. He seems to be trying to sell, uh, going to the market to Popfly, saying, We have the best bathhouse here in Newark, where you can take the most relaxing bath ever. And in addition, we have some of the best treats in the region. Wouldn't those be like the only treats and the only bathhouse in the region? Shh, Mr. Smoot, that's kind of rude. These people don't have that much. Well, no, I'm just saying, like, yes, you're the best if you're the only because there's that no competition. That is how you do business, right, Mr. Pinavir? Yep. I remember I dug a deep pit and filled it with water and tried to heat it with stone and tried to sell it off as a bathhouse and uh, was also scolded when Sid came back. Did, did you try to put it in your house? I put it in my landlord's backyard and tried to charge uh, 10 copper a bath. That's... That's pretty reasonable. He should have just charged you for uh, the uh, usage of the space, and then you could have made more money. Well, I got away with it for long enough, but uh, he had me give the money back for some reason. Interesting. She she leers at you, concerned. So, you guys continue heading right past the group, and as you walk over, all of you can make a reception check. E! 17. 20. There was no words exchanged between Taylor and the rest of the group. You just see them. They just, they look at you, make eye contact, and then they turn and walk away. Hey, 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 Well, come on. Yeah, what are you doing? I heard it. Uh, Oh. Beep. Are you referring to Patrick? (gasps) Why does it have a name? Mr. Taylor, Mr. Allen, would you like to carry him? I would not. He likes you. Look at that face. me. He's making eyes at you. Look at him. I thought we agreed to sell this thing to Popeye. It doesn't do that. It's literally just looking at him. I, I, just, just hold on. Salivating. I, I will grab a Molly. <laughs> Salivating. I will grab a Molly by the shoulder. I thought we agreed to sell this thing to Popeye. What did you do? She's really convincing. No. You just have a weak spine when it comes to her. Wouldn't you? No. Look at those eyes. Look at that thing's eyes. It's like... I refuse to be weak-willed when it comes to the beast. The beast looks at you. <laughs> Beady little eyes. Blue. Blue eyes stare at you. Your cuteness will not save you from my fury. You know, you keep saying that. Hmm. Ed, maybe you should market that. Maybe put it on a shirt. How would you do that? Uh, stitching. It would take ages. We'd have to make sure that the each shirt would sell for a good portion. Either way, why is it in town? Oh, we let you in town. They're that's going. a good point. That's a They're, very good that's point. That's a good point. I am not illegal. I'd like to see your papers, sir. Well, considering <laughs> this is going to be a Tijin settlement soon, I wouldn't I wouldn't bet on that. that. I don't think anyone has papers like that anymore, miss. Exactly. Wait, does that mean that Alan, you, Mr. Allen, you are jailbait? <laughs> that is not what that means, ma'am, and I generously ask that you do not inquire about that phrase. Oh, okay. 
can we please get this thing out of town? Well, you didn't want to carry it, so... You can carry it if you want. I know you really like him. He usually stares at you at night. <laughs> <laughs> oh. You can carry him or Isabel, and I'll, I'll pull out Isabel, and I'll, like, wave the hand at him. <gasps> that is so cute! Both of these things should be burned in salted fire. I cover the ears of Isabel. <gasps> Cece hugs and squeezes Patrick tighter. That is an evil, wicked animal, and that is a ghost voodoo doll. I do not take kindly to either. Is he coming? Oh no! Is it's he coming, coming back, back round? <laughs> he, he has the band following him around, and he's actually making his way towards where you guys are. Nope, nope, nope! I'm out! I'm out! <laughs> I don't trust is, that is music. Is he walking towards our direction? He's what walking towards Confounded the direction that you're music. going in. Well, we're here first, so let's keep going. Okay. I'm, I'm walking away. I'm walking away. So I guess Mess picked up his pace. D yeah. Did I miss something? <laughs> yes. Hamburger. <laughs> <laughs> they got burgers, and y'all didn't tell me? Yeah. I mean, someone's been eating them. <sighs> Mayor Amble Gimble. Try not to. Uh, I'm going to uh, need I you am... to say that again. He's the mayor of this. Pl uh, no, 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 not the mayor part. The other part. Amble Gimble. Amble Gimble. Okay. I'm intentionally leaving out the H sound so that he never hears it. <laughs> <laughs> but you just see him. He's basically marching his way, and you guys are heading towards where the gate is, right? Uh, well, yeah, anything at any points of interest over here. Okay. So you guys walk past several houses being followed by this band for a really, really long time. And it seems to not be leaving from behind you guys. And uh, all have... the way up until you get to the gate where you see inside, there seems to be more of these guards just walking around. And you Guard. also see uh, there appears to be two separate buildings. Can I get a better description of the guards? Like, as in, do they have human faces? Are they wearing masks? And are they, what are they armed with? They are wearing some sort of makeshift armor. Some of them are carrying bows, crossbows, and others are carrying spears. Is there a reason we're being followed by an overgrown oligarch and his ostentatious party? Someone swallowed the thesaurus this morning. Pardon me, excuse me. Out of the way, rabble starts walking, just trying to pass Look through you guys. Oh, goodness. Oh, thank you. He's just not trying to leave us alone. Thank you. He walks through the gate. The I guess his problem. We are poor. Ah, oh, thank goodness for that. <sighs> thank you for the translation, Cece. It's appreciated. Oligarchy. I haven't been this poor since... Since... Oh, it's terrible! The we book. need money. And, and where do you suppose we get that? In oh, three maybe. days before we leave. Maybe there's a job board. Some towns have them. I've heard that some people sell their bodies. I, mm, we're, uh, no, we're, no. We, we can sell Patrick. <gasps> I am quite, I'm quite attached to all of my internal organs and all of my limbs. I didn't mean like that. I mean like you go work in a field. Oh, Taylor can do that. Uh, Taylor, go sell your body. Ooh. If I sell my body, I'm, I'm keeping the money. It's, it's mine. <laughs> Y'all want money, sell your own bodies to, to slave labor. But what if I could get you more per hour? Wait a second. Um, Al Mr. Allen, is it slave labor if you're being paid for it? No, no, it's not. While they're arguing over this part, I'm just, I'm walking towards something that looks like a shop. I'm looking for a shop and walking that way. On this side of the village, there does not appear to be any shops. You see a lot of these buildings that are on top of pylons. You actually start to notice that some places that you walk, your shoes start to sink a little bit into some mud. And the sulfurous smell gets stronger the closer you get to these buildings on pylons. You do also see, though, that there seem to be people who are wading in the water and they appear to be trying to catch stuff with nets and whatnot. Um, also, you do see that these little areas of wetland, I guess we call them, there are different types of plants, like ferns, some flowering plants that are inside of it. Cattails. Mm. I wonder Cat if we tails. can get some fish here. Don't, I've only tried dried fish before. Oh, they taste terrible. Don't, don't eat their fish. No? I, I highly recommend against it. Oh. I mean, that's me. I, I, I just don't like their, their food. Most people do not stay in New Wern when they get here. I can't imagine why. Taylor munching on his second kebab. I don't know. Oh. It's all right to me. You're eating? Oh, no. I can't believe you're eating that. Look, I'm hungry. Meat's meat. All right. I ain't picky at this point. You go ahead. Eat it. Don't worry about it. Is there a problem, sir? 
You're eating it. You're fine. Just don't worry about it. Why are you freaking out? Sometimes it's better not to know where your food comes from. I, I, I'll pat him on the back and go, that's his job, Taylor. It, it smooths to correct people. Mm. Yours for all the actual hard work. So, Mest, what do you do? You, I you... was, I'm, since I couldn't find anything that looked like a shop around here, I'm moving on. Okay. So, I think it looks like we've seen all that we can see. Uh, unless uh, there's more interest uh, to be able to see about those pylons. Taylor would be occupying himself uh, aiding Smoot in protecting uh, the line of sight of Patrick. Oh, hmm. There's water. Patrick likes water. No, 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 no. We are not letting this thing out of our grasp. If that thing gets loose and runs amok, I don't even want to know what kind of sway Mr. Hamburglar has in this town. Cece, if you put that thing in the mud water, I will stab it immediately. Why would you do How that? How dare you? You're so cruel. I refuse if to If I be got in the water, would you stab me immediately? No, because you're not a venomous water-dwelling snake monster. He's not a venomous water-dwelling snake monster. He is literally exactly that. He's Patrick. The venomous water-dwelling snake monster. He's not a monster. If anyone's a monster, you're the monster. I'm a human being. <laughs> I may be monstrous. But I am a human being. You're something. All I'm saying, Cece, is there will be consequences if you loose the dangerous animal. Part of me just wants to split from the party because it would make doing things easier. So, Mest, you go off a little bit further than everyone else. You do see there are docks that essentially make pathways and walkways to different buildings. You also see that there is another part of the fence that extends a little bit further inward. And also opens up into another area where it's not really gated, but it is a solid wall that's separating it from the rest of the village. Okay. And from inside, you kind of can see that there are some, like, uh, hay bales and whatnot, but you can't really see much else beyond that. Okay, so for right now, I'm still not seeing something that looks like a shop where goods could be exchanged for monetary value. Where um, on this side of the village, there are no shops, it seems. Walking in a direction until I find some shops. So you start walking in a direction. What are you guys doing? Uh, I probably slink off and try to find the inn so I can uh, mingle and just kind of talk about the town and try to pick up any rumors. All right. So, uh, Taylor, Patrick, Patrick, Taylor, you've previously been acquainted, but proper introductions are in order. You guys have fun. If we're going to be in town for any longer than as we have been, I'm going to go get Cerulean. You're leaving? I'm going to be back. I'm going to find you eventually. I just don't feel comfortable leaving my pet back there. Makes sense. I understand. Unwatched. I mean, I could I could have Patrick watch him. I, I don't trust the outcome of those events. Uh, though I don't quite know who would win. Hopefully Cerulean. And Smooth uh, just walks off. Interesting. Where's the bead? Does anybody know where he went? <laughs> <laughs> so Perry. Okay, so Mask, why don't you make a perception check? Fifteen. You just continue to meander down, walking past some of the villagers who you make eye contact with them and they a lot of them seem to quickly like look away or try to avoid contact with you. For Finevere, you start making your way which direction do you go? I mean, I do I have heard things about this town. Uh People mm -hmm. have been here before. Can I use Knowledge Local to try to navigate better? Sure. 24. Okay. You remember hearing from somebody in the caravan um, the location of essentially where the market would be and also that there was an inn over in that direction. So you know to head back towards the entrance going to the left instead. Yep, I'll make my way that way. Okay. So you make your way. A lot of the villagers, they are smiling, and yet, at the same time, they kind of, like, shirk away and try to avoid you. Can I sense motive? Sure. A uh, total of ten. They just seem to be uncomfortable with your presence, perhaps. But, I mean, they're just avoiding you. Maybe mm. maybe you smell. <laughs> Who knows? Okay, so, for Alan Taylor, then, what are you going to do? Because Charles Smoot is heading off. Where and is Cece? And the, and the lizard. She's with Amali, who's right next to you. Because I will continue to observe the potentially irresponsible behavior of Cece with said lizard and monitor it. I'm going to chaperone Cece. What? Cece being irresponsible? I don't trust a Molly to have the spine to tell her no anymore. 
All right. We're just going to stand here? I mean, if we have nothing to do, I'm just going to go back to the wagon and wait out three days. I ain't letting that thing out of my sight while it's in town. So you'll let it out of your sight when it's out of town? I ain't letting that thing out of my sight. Hmm. Mr. Allen, you like me. I don't trust you to not behave. I see, I see. If it's... You're always around me. I just don't understand why, but now it makes sense. Everything is coming together. <laughs> Please don't cackle like that again. That that was c- c- terrifying. Can, can we get that thing out of town? Why? It hasn't done anything wrong. I would really not like it to be noticed that it's in our possession, considering it has been stated to be illegal to be possessed by the masses. It is? What? Since when? It, it's a toda. It's illegal for the... What's a toda with you? <laughs> Just, She's so much rage. As a player, I appreciate CC so much. <laughs> I can't be there to show it in character, but I feel it. And <laughs> Molly, heart. I'm gonna need some help. With? I'm gonna need you to teach me inner peace. What? Because otherwise, I may not be able to stay cool. I don't know what you mean by inner peace, but uh, I can teach you how to not. I have managed suffocate. to remain remarkably calm. Given the flippant nature of your little sister with this lizard. Sissy just looks back and forth. Interesting. I see. Rivalry. Understood. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no. New headcanon. Sissy thinks she's in the horror anime. And she's the main protagonist. All right. Well, um, I guess if we're just gonna stand around here and do nothing, that's fine. Maybe we should find Davide. I, I'm going to go find David. I, I don't know about you guys, but he's been vomiting. And bye, I guess. She starts to walk away really awkwardly, like, and looking back and stopping every once in a while. And then she just, like, just walks out of you. All right, this is the most awkward thing I've ever had. Uh, Al- Alan, if you want to watch the Toto so bad, here. He takes it from Cece and puts it in Alan's hands and just takes her by the hand and walks away. I will hold it away from my body. Actually, no. I I will bring it a little closer to my body, cautiously, and I will carry it out of town. It snuggles into your chest. Stop being cute. It loves you. You could roll sense motive if you wanted. Nah. (laughs) Nah. Meep. This thing is evil. I won't change my mind. (laughs) I don't want to change my mind. Okay. So, Alfred, what you see as you're walking by towards the back of the village, you notice that actually... There are a lot of buildings that seem to be in getting built, repaired. Part of the wall seems to be missing back here. Something just doesn't look right. You see a lot of villagers are working on repairing a lot of these buildings, though. All right. You also see that a lot of them, again, are still avoiding eye contact and just are furiously working at repairing these houses. Also, you do notice something is very strange about some of the damaged buildings and part of the wall. Is anyone actively working on the wall right now? A lot of the villagers are just like ambling about repairing whatever they can and they, they're just really avoiding you and a lot of times wherever you step a lot of them will just go around just pretend not to notice. Alright, I'm gonna walk over to the wall. Okay, you walk over to the wall. I want to investigate the wall. Okay, you can make a perception check of the wall. 19. You notice that the wall although it, it kind of goes with, I guess, the odor around the town and village, but it seems to be covered in a, this part at least, sticky, slimy film of some kind. The wall itself, or? This part of the wall that you're examining. Does it look like the sticky, slimy substance is coming up from the ground, or does it look like it was left there by something else? Um, it it appears to you that this doesn't look like it's really anywhere from the ground. It just is kind of on it. In various places. I'm going to take out a small vial and I'm going to use the kitchen knife I have to try to scoop some of this slime into a vial. Okay, you do so. You get some in a vial. I'm going to start heading back to the caravan now. Okay. Because I left most of my stuff in the caravan. Okay. Do you go back the exact same way that you came from or do you try to find a different way out? I'm going to attempt to avoid the last known location of Hamel, 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 Hamel Gimmel. I, <laughs> I can't remember. Hammer I, the Gimmel. Hammer Gimli. Hammer Gimmel. 
Wait, did my character? I don't think my character heard his name. No, not no, the pro- well. No, I Finnevier may have properly pronounced it once, but everyone Amel, was throwing Amel around. Gimmel. He said I Amel mis- Gimmel. I mispronounced it on purpose. Yeah, he said Amel Gimmel. Mest is consciously aware of Amel Gimmel is currently the place that that odd music is coming from, so he's avoiding Amel Gimmel and the last known place of Amel Gimmel. You go a different way then, because the path that you took was basically just straight down past the houses, past one of the walls, and straight down towards the back of the village where you were making like a loop around. So yes. now you are heading essentially straight and then turning where you see a row of houses leading almost like a straight path. Okay. Funnily enough, as you are making your way that way, you do find yourself in what appears to be a somewhat market area. It does not appear to be completely busy or open, but you do see some like stalls with food and, and people manning those stalls. Uh, you see a few kids running around, but you, you also see Finnevere coming that way as well. Oh, there's Finnevere. Like the opposite um, direction. I uh, guess I'll go meet up with Finnevere or attempt to. You, uh, after like this whole conversation, it took a while for this all to happen. You finally make your way away from the group and you, using your knowledge about what you've heard from the area, you make your way over to where you think the inn is and you take a moment and you stop and you see some of these stalls. A lot of the market ones are not quite open yet. Not open yet. Oh, like it, like in the day. You know that, and this is from what you've heard, especially with that knowledge you had earlier, that most of the market does not open until about Trisdun, which would be the next day. As you know that a lot of small villages don't have daily markets. They're usually like twice a week, once a week. Yeah, it makes sense. You can't afford to be out in one place every day. Uh, also, could you make a perception check for me really quick? Uh, yes, I can. Ten. As you're perusing through you and coming down, you definitely see Alfred Kevin Fest coming towards you. Ah, uh, great. And you also see a building down towards one of the docks that appears to be an inn. I think it's about time I go check it out. Okay. Is it like a distance away or, or is it like we're pretty close? If it's a distance, I'll, I'll do something different. For a village that has been said to be upcoming and doing really well and growing and should be a town soon it seems kind of like it's not that spaced out so you and mess meet up yep Finnevy. i see we've both found the market well i'm pretty sure it doesn't open up uh much until tomorrow ah, i was hoping to pawn off some of my less useful stuff well ah. maybe we can find some private buyers best use our time to try to get more information of this place uh, i try to see what's going on if we're going to be here for a while we should know what's going on Speaking of which, do you recognize this at all? And I hand him the bottle of slime from the wall. Okay. Uh, is there a knowledge check to, or uh, do I have a chance at recognizing this? You could try rolling maybe like knowledge nature. Uh, sure. Uh, 28. Okay. I didn't even know I could do that. You personally have never seen anything like this, but... You looking at it, you assume it could be from some kind of creature that might live in a swamp. Maybe something that has slimy skin. Yeah, you're you're not really sure what it came from. I mean, for all you know, it could be from some kind of fish, some kind of um, I'm trying to think worm, maybe. But you don't really know off the top of your head. You've never really been in this area, but that's pretty much all you can get from that. All that I can really make of this is that it seemed to, it seems like some kind of bile or something came from a creature. Where did you get it? Part of the wall was destroyed over in that direction, and it's covering the wall. I was going to take a little bit of, an, bit of it and see if I could analyze it or something. It's odd, and it almost feels like something attacked the village or something, given how the buildings have been destroyed. The buildings have been destroyed? Well, <laughs> at least they're in disrepair, at the very least. And along with the, with the large hole in the wall, I'd be... Willing to guess something happened. Well, that would make sense why they're trying to get more support. Yes, but none of the villagers seem too friendly. Yeah, I noticed that. I'm thinking about trying to uh, alleviate that a bit. You hear a door open nearby. Are you noticing anything interesting about it, or...? Divi comes walking out. Ah, oh, that was amazing. It appears he came out from the inn. That was the best thing that I could have done. That solved a lot of problems. Oh, it still smells out here, but it's nowhere near as bad. This is perfect. Oh, hello, boys. Did you get to try the bathhouse? Yes, I did. It is great. I highly recommend it. Actually, they even have one that's uh, good for healing uh, skin wounds, apparently. Amazing. 
I did get this point at my shoulder where I took the one damage last last round. Oh, you took that like a champ, and he maxed that spot on your Still arm. Still a little sore. Are you going inside of the inn? Because that's where they have the baths. Ooh, the best baths. Mm -hmm. The best baths. No, I haven't done enough to earn a bath yet. You see, I gotta accomplish something before I treat myself. Otherwise, I'm prone to treating myself way too much. It's a major problem I had earlier oh. in my youth. No, 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 no. Listen. Now listen to David. I am listening to David. You need to take care of yourself first before you take care of anything else. You are more important because if there is no you, there cannot be anything else for you. Hmm. You know what? That might just be a pliable enough excuse for me to believe it. All right. Best. Let's take a bath. Not necessarily together. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say. That sound pretty gay. Uh, uh, you know what? Uh, it's worth bath, it. Do it. A, a bath does sound pretty good. We've been cooped up in those cabins for a while. Great. I'm in for round two. Uh, we go into the inn. You guys go into the inn. All right. Outside of the village. Do I, do I, do I make it out? You make it out. And Charles Smoot is with Cerulean. Where do you plan on keeping that thing? I'm putting it back in the wagon. Ah, to jump Igthar or Drizelda? Nope. I'm going to put it back in the wagon, back mm -hmm. in its bundle. Uh -huh. And I'm going to sit there and watch it while you go get Popeye so we can sell this thing before CC gets back. Listen, all I know is that I was told to not Americanize things. And last time that someone sold CC's pets, it didn't really end on really good terms. This is not CC's pet. She did name it. I don't care. Listen, I, it, it doesn't matter whether you or I think of it as a pet. It matters if CC thinks of it as a pet. Actually, it doesn't because she ain't here. I, I mean, you're not wrong. But again, that was the same problem. I will suffer the wrath of that child. That, that's fine. Then you can go get Poplar and you can sell it. I, 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 my nope. hands are clean. Do you want to watch uh, it till I... day? Uh, are you going to are, are watch it till I get back? He keeps Because I ain't leaving it alone. I'm assuming he's walking away. He is walking away. You're just standing there at the gate angrily with this toad in your hands. Dag merit. Also, uh, Igthar, Giselda, and their daughter uh, left earlier, right as soon as they got to the village, because this is the village they had family, a newborn baby in. All right. Well, then uh, I will bundle it up if it complies. Will it com Is it complying with getting bundled? It's, it's it been put in different things multiple times throughout the journey. It's gotten used to it. Okay, how, 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 we had it in a bag, right? You had it in a bag. We, is that bag still in the in the, the, the wagon? No, it is not. Hmm. Here's it has been taken by somebody. Dang it! Do I have anything to wrap this thing in? There are blankets. I will attempt. There's a blanket on Molly's bunk. There is a blanket on Cece's bunk. There is a blanket on Smoots. There is a blanket will, on Alan Taylor's. I will take the blanket from my own bunk and I will attempt to swaddle it. Beep. This has happened about three or four times on the journey, by the way. It's and been swaddled. I will carry it with its head facing away from my chest. In your blanket specifically? Yes, in my blanket. No, it's I like... mean, it's been swaddled three times in your blanket specifically. Oh <laughs> oh. And I will make my way to the head uh, caravan wagon. It, it's like the dad and the, the dog that he didn't ask for, except for this time it's a Toda. Okay. Uh, is there anyone in this wagon? You see that... Popli is sitting on top of the black wagon. Ha ah, perfect. Just the lady I'd like to see. She's smoking a pipe. Would you care to have a word, Madam Popli? With me? Of course. What can I help you with? I have a rather exotic animal uh -huh. that I wish to be rid of. She looks down from on top of the wagon. Interesting. She starts to come down. I have not seen one of these in a very long time. So, how much are you asking for it? And where did you get it, if I might ask? We found it in the woods, and it followed us home. Bluff. We did find it in the woods. But that's still a lie. <laughs> yeah. Hey, it, it followed with us home. I don't know that I put anything into Bluff, have I? So, it's a straight 15. Well, of course I do not want to know too much about it, but I suppose that uh, excuse would do. Now, here's the thing. We had agreed, me and my group, to... See if you were interested in this in this creature. I'll and give you then, 500 silver for it. That sounds pretty fair. <laughs> Can you go 550? 500 is more than enough to carry contraband. That is very fair. I'm so glad that Finn wasn't there. That is like the anti of marketing. If he had to watch that, that that's the torture tape. Oh my gosh. But good job. You made the sale. You crushed a little girl's dreams. She's going to be on a rampage. 
For a moment, I thought you meant Finnevere. I'm like starting to get offended about that you're a little girl. I will warn you, the little girl that, that is with us, the one that wears a mask, uh, she may come looking for it. We cannot, I cannot have her keeping this thing. She gets attached to animals. Then that is your problem to deal with, Oh, not it is mine. absolutely my problem. I'm just saying. How much do you want to <laughs> bet that C- that Popfly is going to resell it back to Cece for a profit? Oh, that is a good chance. She doesn't have the money. Cece doesn't? She already spent money. She still good. has enough. All right. She has more than what you have. You, you told me. I, I thought that you can't blame this on me. Smoot told me to do this. I, I didn't say anything. You absolutely told me to sell it to her myself. So, is it the deal? Done. Very well. She goes over to the door on the black wagon, pulls out a key, and unlocks it, and then opens it up. Please, come inside. I, I walk inside. Okay. Make a perception check as you go in. Twelve. Entering into the wagon, you see a sight that reminds you somewhat of the reliquary back in Ashby. You see the black boxes lined up against the walls and inside of them you see illuminated just barely by a faint light different relics inside of the boxes but in one of them you see what appears to be a head sitting on top of or like attached by some strange method to a glass globe filled with brains please come inside just going to actively look away from that and avoid all eye contact with it. There's a seat right in front of it. I will avoid all eye contact with it. Okay. She starts to go into a drawer on the side, pulls out a piece of paper and pencil, not pencil, pen, and she begins to essentially write out a agreement, essentially a contract, which she hands over to you to sign. Is this in a language that I can read? No. I'm going to have to ask you to read that aloud because I can't read your script. She... <laughs> <laughs> Is that an insult about her handwriting or not? To be fair. No, no, no. no. To be fair. And and he's just going to sign something taking <laughs> the person's word. He could be signing his soul away for all he knows. Having an aneurysm of such bad merchanting. He is not a wise man. He's not a merchant either. <laughs> he's an American. You, you, you do what you need to do. He is... He is not a salesman. He is blue collar. She smiles. All right, I'll read it off to you. Essentially, what it says is that this Toto will be in the full custody and ownership of Pablo's caravan until such a time that it is sold to a new owner. If anything should happen to the Toto, by a result of someone taking it, you would be responsible for that, just in case it would be... Somebody that we both know. Getting too involved with it. Oh. The Toto should not be handled by anyone but one of our caretakers. And it would stay in one of our specialty wagons where it would be cared for. And the price is listed on the page as well. Are are numbers still the same? No. Dang it. Oh, well. You agreed on 500. Yeah. You know how to count. Just use your fingers a lot. (laughs) I will not be held responsible as a player for this sale. <laughs> no, we can fully hold you responsible 100%. for this. <laughs> oh, your you, you, you your can... name is on the documentation. No one else's. Uh, <laughs> you, you are in control of this character right he now. He signs, Finavir Avir. <laughs> Do you know how to sign his name? I, I don't know their script, so I will sign my name in English script. Oh, one last thing. Perhaps we should not mention anything about this. To anyone. Simply tell her it's gone on a long trip. Mr. Jenkins Farm. It went up the river. It it's bit in me, a better I dropped place. it, and it ran off. Got it. If that is what you want, we can always make it more realistic. <laughs> I mean, I mean I, I'm, I'm just going to tell her that. Or I'll, I'll figure something out. She reaches out to take it from you. I, I hand it over. Okay. And she hands you a bag full of coin. I count the coin while I'm there. Okay. You count out. 500 silver pieces. And if she questions it, I, I, I'll i tell her, I mean no disrespect, ma'am. I just... No. I, is that this good practice? You should always check to make sure you're getting the exact price you asked for. Anything less would be unacceptable. Very well. Now, when you are done, you may leave. And this is only between you and me. Your name is on the contract, after all. All right. Your name. 
Not mine. <laughs> not mine. You do realize that you just signed. You know what? I'm not going to say anything. No, say it. Say it. I want to know. He just signed an agreement that means that he just sold the Tota for negative money. Not only is he responsible for the Tota going missing, missing, which is worth an aforementioned valued 500 silver pieces. But also, in case he didn't catch that, which he didn't, all damages accrued due to the missingness of the Tota. Did we, did we he, I'm pretty sure everyone caught that. Yeah, no, no, he didn't. No, I didn't. <laughs> you didn't? She said that quite explicitly. She said if anything happens to the Tota, it's your fault. Did you say I'd be on the hook for damages for y'all... Lo- uh, for, for it going loose in y'all's care? No. I said if something should happen to it, in case of certain individuals. A contract is a contract. Yes, and amendments are amendments. I'm just saying, if that thing... Please leave my wagon. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well played, sir. Well played. Smooth walking back into the village. <laughs> Smoot goes into the village. I have Cerulean. Unaware of what could happen behind him. La 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 la. Unaware of the trench grass. I <laughs> have done nothing. Ugh. Oh no! Oh. You did. Ex- you are. You are good. also exactly on the hook. For oh, this. good, Cerulean. You. You. You've come such a long way. He's looking around at the village, and he seems to actually be disturbed by the odor. Yeah, yeah. I, I know. Me, me too, but me too. Here, let, let, let's see if we can find you something to eat. And maybe uh, we'll find everyone else in the market, too. Okay. You follow your nose. Moxie Cerulean follows his, and he pulls you towards food. <laughs> Come. Stay. Handle animal. That's his trick that he's trained in. You have to roll handle animal for a trick. You know that, right? You're at bonuses. Uh, I That should be 22. Perfect. Especially with his first time practicing his come and stay command. Come. He stops pulling on stay. his lead. He stops walking. Come and stay is basically heal. It's amazing. He was going to the right. You want to go to the right? He speaks English. <laughs> I, I just let him lead me to wherever he wants to go. Oh, no. He was he was sneezing. I don't know what you want. Oh, okay. He didn't sense, but I'm kidding. Okay, so he starts pulling you towards the right, and you follow after him. Pretty much. And you walk past the gate. Mayor Gimbal is walking out of the gate. Gimber. Oh, gosh. I'm messing up. You know what? It's Gimbal now, because it, it feels better. He makes eye contact with you. Ah! I see you're still here. Yeah, that's what happens when you travel through a town and you need to make camp for a few days. May I direct you towards the inn where you can take a wonderful bath and your creature can go along with you? Me and my steed are just fine, thank you. We have lodging. Ah, yes. I assume you've been traveling with Popli's caravan then. Indeed we have. Wonderful. All right. Ah. Quick question. Um, it happened in closer relative vicinity to your town more so than Ashby. Uh, you know anything about a man named Chico and his banditos? I cannot say that I've heard of anyone named Chico. All right. Well, you might want to be somewhat careful. It seems like this place is fairly well defended, but uh, yeah, there are some Of course we're fairly well defended. We couldn't become a, a town without being well defended. Is there particular reason why? Is that like a requirement on the checklist, or are you under assault from something worse than Chico and the Banditos? It's a requirement for any town to have some form of defense. Interesting. There literally is a checklist. Well then, um... Uh, and of course we're meeting every requirement. Uh, of course you are. Uh, who makes this arbitrary checklist, if you don't mind me asking? The cities. The, the cities? Do, do you have like a big party where you all get around and be like, woo, we're a town. Woo, we're a village. You want to be a town? Is that, is that how that works? No, you have to apply to become one. Oh, so there literally is a big party where all the cities get together and just woo with their cityness. I don't think that the cities get together to party very much. However, I can say that our application to Senai has been accepted and we are awaiting our certification. Oh, well, congratulations. Thank you. Now, I would again suggest maybe perhaps visiting our local inn. You can take a wonderful bath there, have a place to stay. I look at Cerulean. I look at the man. I look at Cerulean. I look at the man. Cerulean looks at you. Cerulean looks at the man. Cerulean looks at you. Cerulean looks at the man. So these baths, is it like a hot spring? Yes, of course. Okay, cool. So then pets could totally be allowed. Then I just start to walk away. Oh, 
Oh, dear. <laughs> so, inside of the inn, you see that it's not overly auspicious inside. It seems rather relaxed. It's not very busy. Candles lit around the area. There's a fireplace, some tables, but it doesn't seem to be very well patronized right now. I'm looking forward to this, David. I just, I just feel oh so unnerved. Like a thousand bad deals happened all at once. I can feel it in my spine. I think. Ah. I feel it too. Oh wait, nope. That, that's a toot. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. I apologize. Where, uh, where does everybody uh, else anyway? Uh, how much are these baths anyway? Oh well, uh, if I remember correctly. Actually, you could just ask a guy over there. Uh, is there a someone who's manning this? There is somebody standing behind a booth. Important question. Is he the only one here besides us? There is another person in the corner who is a one-man band. <clears throat> Trying not to bobble the goblin as hard as possible. Because <laughs> uh, I want to bobble the goblin. <laughs> I will go up and uh, approach the innkeeper. Hello, sir. How can I help you? I heard you have the best baths around. Of course we have the best baths around. Can I get you a bath? Ah, uh, what's the price? Oh, well, our regular baths are two copper, and then our supreme bath is four. Ah. Uh. And if you're looking for a place to stay, uh, we, our lodging is five copper a night. Oh, uh, good to know. Ah, uh, I have arrangements for, uh, for lodging. Would you mind showing me around, see the difference? I'm interested to see what makes a bath so supreme and different. And also, if your lodging accommodations are much better than my own, then maybe I'll consider. He, he looks you up and down. Sorry, sir, I can't really take you into uh, the back area since that's mostly private. Uh, but, however, if you would like, I can also just give you a brief description of what exactly goes on. Oh, sure. I'll take that. We have the most lavish baths you could ever imagine. Also, if you need to have your clothes clean while you're having a bath, though that is two copper, and also we include a mending service. But the baths are reheated, obviously. Of course, uh, spring water and all that. Sparkling water. It sparkles. Uh, it's my first day on the job. I'm sorry. Uh, we all have our first days. Uh, You're doing fine. So uh, a supreme bath involves a uh, luxurious uh, massage and, and also uh, our village's specialty mud, which is used to cleanse the skin. Hmm. And a hot bath. I know someone who might enjoy that, but I think I'll actually take the regular bath. I'm not too keen on the uh, massages. Thank you. Uh, uh, mess, my treat. What do you want? I, I can assure you our, our village's most lovely ladies would be providing the massages as well as uh, assisting you with your bath. Uh, I appreciate the thought, but uh, I like to keep to myself. Very well. Thank you, though. Mess, it's my treat. We've had a long journey. And you've had to put up with a lot. Oh, that is supreme again. Oh, that was great. Fine. we we'll do the regular bath. Ah, uh, sure. I'll take a regular bath as well. I'd also like to have my clothes cleaned. All right, sir. That's two copper on top of the uh, of the two. So that's four copper from you and then two from yourself, sir. Uh, you know, Mest, I could clean your clothes for two copper. Now listen to me, Mest. If he's going to be cleaning your clothes for two copper already on, on top of that, now listen, you could take the supreme bath. For the four. Is that what you had, David? I had it. It was amazing. <sighs> All right, fine. You've talked me into it. And the mud could be interesting. Let me know what it's like. If it actually does have, like, medicinal properties, I'd be very interested. You know more about that kind of stuff than I do. <laughs> yes, thank you, sir. So it's, um, so I'm paying for him. Oh, I'm so excited. You're going to love it, Mist. There are beautiful women that come in. They give you the greatest massage. I've never had such a good massage they get all the right places, appropriately. I'll, I'll take your word for it, David. Uh, no, you don't have to take my word for it. You will feel it. It will be in your soul. Sure. So he he takes your money. All right. And you guys proceed towards your baths. Okay. This will be fun. Oh, no. <laughs> all right. So you um actually see him clap. All right, please sir, follow follow her over there. So uh, this young woman comes down from upstairs and you hear her feet coming from around. The one man band starts getting a little bit more excited and playing until the uh, man behind the counter just like quiets him down and he starts playing something a little bit softer and relaxing. So she leads you both back at, towards the back of the inn where you actually do see that there are doors aligning against the walls and then she takes you upstairs. Interesting. 
Interesting indeed. Yeah, I no, I I'm she all ears. You upstairs. Cool. Right this way. Hi. And one moment, I'll be right back for you, sir. All right then. Oh, I'm so ready for this. Number two. Let's go. <laughs> David is very excited for his bath. Oh, I thought he was excited for a bowel movement. <laughs> I, sometimes I they mean, can be pretty exciting. When the hot water gets you just right. <laughs> when you're ready for the day. Now. Okay. So, well, you're led upstairs and you're brought to a room where there is a basically an open room. There is an old man sitting in a bathtub right now. Uh, there's several baths lying around the area and all of them kind of have like a fire underneath them. The each individual? Each individual. That's great. But the baths are kind of small for your height. They look like they're made for women's size. All right, right this way, sir. Any of the baths are open for you. I pick out one that, I, that looks nice to me. Okay. Hey, they got you too, huh? Oh, I've had a long trip. The heat will be good for my joints. Oh, yep. And he starts, like, cracking his toes, like, individually. This is the best bath I've had in a long time. Ah. And he just sinks into his bath more. I'll strip down and get into mine. Uh, so, uh, I don't know if that's the that's appropriate procedure here. Would I know that that's, like, you're supposed to wear trunks, or am I allowed to just... You're I paying. should know cultural things. You're paying them. Oh, I just if, if I don't want to re, uh, I don't, I don't have to dry out my shorts. I get in. I just fully strip clothed. down and get in. Okay, sure. She picks her clothes up off the floor and puts them in the basket. All right. She turned away as you undressed. Okay. Did the old man? Ah, Why would nope. I care? He's staring intently at you. I remember when I was that age. <laughs> I also had a body that was quite killed up with ladies. And should I be so lucky I lived your age? I'm 36. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that would catch me up. Okay. <laughs> You're kidding, right? I mean, I could be, but I tell all the ladies that. They always laugh and don't take me seriously, though. Oh, he's treating you like one of the ladies. Mm. <laughs> so you, are you new in town as well? New in town? I've been here for weeks. I mean, it's the best bath you've ever had. I haven't left. The same tub? <laughs> Do you need help getting out of there? <laughs> <laughs> what now? I'm fine. I'm okay. fine. Just enjoying the view. As she walks out. <laughs> All right, downstairs. <laughs> Finnevere is left with this old man who is making conversation. Oh, I'm glad to chat it up. All right, so the woman comes back down the stairs. All right, now if you wouldn't mind following me. She leads you back about four doors down to the left and she opens one of the doors into a room which has a very strange odor. Now don't worry, the smell is not great, but the results speak for themselves he says and he like does this weird like hand gesture to his face and body. Trust me, it, it, you'll see when you're done. Get going, go on. Uh, Alright. <laughs> I step inside. <laughs> you uh, go into the room it's dimly lit it's kind of like a sauna in here the room is made of wood panels uh there is steam coming up from a pit filled with some kind of liquid mud that you can't really see well hmm. Hmm. <laughs> i'm glad we're getting both sides of this bath right now yeah no is... the dichotomy is great <laughs> i'm enjoying mine <laughs> It's, there's mud. Come on, brother. Inside. And he pushes you in. <laughs> to the room. I already walked in. <laughs> he pushes you, like, further in. He's like, come on. We're, you said we're sharing the bed. I am uh, ready. Uh, uh, okay. <laughs> I, uh, all right. Just, uh, yep. <laughs> Two guys taking a bed <laughs> together. It's fine. So he strips down, putting all his clothes to the side. And he gets in and you hear, like, some weird, like, Welching and also like wet. I'll, uh, this, this is the way. I'll take my bag off, set it to the side, uh, and then I will also strip down and, uh, test the mud, I guess. It, it feels muddy. okay. It feels muddy, It, but it doesn't feel bad. All right. It feels like if you step into a puddle of mud. In, into the mud I go. <laughs> into the mud you go. It's got a nice temperature. And as soon as you get in, you feel very relaxed. It's great. Amazing. 
We're going to skip the massage scene. Onward! You can just imagine whatever happens. So, Charles Smoot, you arrive at the inn door after walking around for a bit and being guided. What do you mean elks can't go in the bath? Why not? I'm a loyal, paying customer. Sir, I, I don't understand. Sir, I'm very sorry. We, we let, can't let, let, have listen. the elk let's, in he, the bath. He, he, he's a reasonably sized creature. The ruling goes, if he fits, he sits. Okay? I, I don't make the rules. Them's, them's the rules. Uh, sir, I, I can't have you bringing in uh, the, your your mount, sir. It, oh, it's... yeah, sure. See if you get my patronage this way, you best bath in town, my butt angrily walks away. <laughs> sir, I can have one of our ladies clean your elk outside. Oh, nonsense. Me and Cerulean are uh, On separate. the house. Are we? <laughs> <laughs> you may get a good review yet. <laughs> <laughs> he, he signals for one of the girls. She comes up. It's like this really like nicely dressed girl. She's very seductive looking, and she walks over and he reaches for the reins of the <laughs> and smooth hand of and the and she like she's like smiling like giving you eyes and then he hands her the reins and she just uh, looks uh, I would put my hand on her shoulder take care of him well he's still a young buck oh uh, oh uh, <laughs> uh, uh, she starts to lead it back outside and the guy behind the counter just goes thank you um so would you like the uh, what's your cheapest option <laughs> But you're back. Oh, I don't... I wasn't uh, told it had healing uh, properties. A supreme bath would be the cheapest. Wow, you have a very interesting naming scheme. What, what, what are the prices here? A uh, supreme bath would be for copper, and a uh, deluxe bath would be six. You, you, you just uh, skip right to supreme. <laughs> I see you have high standards here. Absolutely. The village has the best baths in any any region around the area. Best baths ever. All right. Well, I mean, hey, if, if that's what it takes, he would give give him for. Well, he'd hand him a silver because I only have silver, and he would say, "You know what? I want the deluxe." Well, at this point, he could give you whatever that is, and you don't know. Ah, I see that you are uh, you know a thing or two about the secret menu. But you, you just said the deluxe was an option, didn't you? For one silver, you get everything. Wait, what? What do you mean every... <laughs> well, I would hope so. Oh, no. What are you... Oh, I was expecting four copper and change, but I... Kind of interested in to see what this everything is. <laughs> everything, please come down. <laughs> <laughs> it, me it means you get uh, some tiramisu. Ter 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 oh, very nice. You'll have access to the loveliest of ladies in the bath. She'll give you the greatest massage. You will have a mud bath along with a deluxe supreme concentrate. Wow, that's a lot of adjectives for one thing. It must be amazing. <laughs> Who scouted this guy? <laughs> <laughs> Give me his agent. <laughs> hey, Fin hey, Finnevere might want to hire him at this rate. No, I want to hire the guy who scouted this guy. <laughs> listen, listen. Whatever I get, make sure the elk gets too. He looks at the silver. Unfortunately, on top, we'd have to have another silver for that. Well, listen, then downgrade me one lower package. Me and Cerulean get the same. Ah, so the Supreme Deluxe without the concentrate. Wait, what's in the concentrate? What's a... What? <laughs> <laughs> it's fruit juice. Who's thinking about it that hard? <laughs> um, I honestly do not know what is in the concentrate. Well, otherwise, just... you try to sell something. To, what, what does it do? You don't even know what it is. What does it do for me? Why do I want it? I have... You gotta sell it to me. I... <laughs> no one in this party that is... That is not Finn knows how anything works if it involves money. Hey, that's not true. <laughs> what do you mean? I got a free bath for my elk. Oh, sir, so, so, listen. Um, I would like to explain that our deluxe supreme of the concentrate is actually said to bring back at least ten years of your youth. I proceed to take off my shirt in the middle of the foyer and be like, "Well, oh, do anything for my back." <laughs> <laughs> his face goes white it looks like he like stomachs a vomit and he swallows <laughs> uh, uh, absolutely sir that's amazing you know I went to a reliquary and I've talked to some of the best seekers I know and they have no idea what's going on back here but if you're betting your establishment's <laughs> honor that it will fix my back I'm 100% in <laughs> back here uh, uh, yes of course uh Obviously, the elk cannot have the same deluxe 
supreme concentrate as you would be having simply because the, the, it has to be what? done inside. You just said I could give him the same concentrate for an extra silver and yeah. I hold out another coin. Oh, he takes it. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I better not be getting chipped here. I know a good deal when I see one. <laughs> you better make sure that this elk gets an identical treatment to me. I will ensure your elk gets the best treatment it possibly can in the village. All right, I accept these terms. Quinn, they can't give your elk hooker service. <laughs> hey, hey, I what? paid for that. The elk's escort. There we go. <laughs> this is all the improvised stuff. Too. I paid for my elk to receive identical treatment. And if he doesn't get it, there will be hell to pay. <laughs> you are led back by a very large woman with very big lips, rosy cheeks. <laughs> it's nice to have a man like you in town. And she leads you back to one of the back rooms. Sure. And you are led to the room third on the right. Okay, cool. Fun. And you enter in and you find yourself in a room that's kind of like a sauna. And there is a pit of mud in the center of it. Hot do, do mud. I, do I see David and, and Master? No. <gasps> Well, we're mug. in a different room. Oh, okay. Very nice. Yes. Congratulations. You made it to a bath. Guys, You. this is the progress we've made. <laughs> I was told that this would cure my back. And if it doesn't cure my back, I will run this establishment through the mud. <laughs> Put a boop. So, Smoot, when you enter into the bath and step into the mud, it it's very weird. It gives you a very euphoric sensation. And as you sink into it, you can actually feel your back start to almost heat up and then cool off. Ah, oh yeah. Mm. And when you get out of the bath, Mm. back no longer hurts. Oh, you know what? I don't know what money is. And I I don't care. All I know is my back has been killing me for two weeks. This is the first time where I felt comfortable. And you know... I hope Cerulean feels the same. And um, the woman comes in to give you your massage. Do you accept? Uh, if my back's no longer tender, he would have no reason to refuse. All right, perfect. So you all got your massages. And by the time she was done with David and Alfred, you all exit from your paths and face each other. And Guinevere comes walking down the stairs. Yeah. Oh, hi, Smoot. Oh, fancy seeing you lot here. Oh, yes. Smoot, careful not to be too American. Oh, what are you talking about? I got free bath for my elk. My goodness. Yeah, on the house, too. Ah, got a we'll great a, bargain. We'll make a, a merchant out of you yet. Great bargain, eh? A great bargain. You know how ah. much I love free. Ah, oh, free is the language of love. I'm amazed you could beat four copper. Ah, oh, Smoot, I'm so glad you found your way here. Wasn't it luxurious? It might have been for four copper. My back no longer hurts, though. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> it, the old adage goes, you get what you pay for. <laughs> Did you put your shirt on? No. Does anyone take a look? Yes. You're Smoot, the one who, yep. Smoot would point yeah. to it. So, if I can see his back, I'd be curious. Okay. I, I gotta make sure he doesn't have the plague, you know. Okay. Uh, so, that's a natural one for a total of five. Twelve. Nice. The sheen from his back being so shiny and beautiful now blinds you temporarily for a moment, Finavir. Oh, I couldn't see. It's too American. Oh, yeah, that's the Supreme <laughs> Deluxe package. Alfred, looking at his back, you actually notice that the spots that had appeared to be irritated before are no longer red, but they're no longer skin either. It looks like he has scales where the skin was. Oh, it feels great. I have not felt this amazing in ages. I'm, I'm poking it. I'm, I'm poking at these scales. Do I feel anything? No. I, does it feel like a scale? It feels very hard. Mm-hmm. It feels smooth, mm-hmm. but very, mm-hmm. very hard. Mm-hmm. What, what exactly did you get again there, sir? Oh, the Supreme Deluxe Package with their special concentrate. Not even the person who runs the place knows what it is. But it was guaranteed to make my back better, and gosh darn if he didn't deliver on a promise. I just hope it makes Cerulean feel just as good. I'll be right back. I'm, I'm walking over to the man at the counter. I will say, <laughs> I mean, uh, my container was just a little smaller than than you'd expect, but at the same time, I feel equally refreshed. 
So yeah, I would definitely put this place on the map. Oh yeah, for sure. Especially with the buy one, get one free for uh, pets exclusive that I got. That was amazing. I'm going to have to tell the whole town about that. <laughs> All right. Hello, hello, sir. How can I help you? Uh, did you enjoy your bath? Uh, yes. I, I would, however, like to ask what the one man with the wound on his back got exactly. Ah, yes. He had our Supreme Deluxe Concentrate bath. Does it typically turn wounds into a uh, bit of a scaly patch, or... What? Smoot and Finnevere come walking down the hall. Do you put your shirt on? No, I have no reason to. I just, I just gesture to this man's back. Hey, so how's Cerulean going? Our inn is not responsible for any side effects that may occur after taking a bath. Oh, what was that for? Master, what'd you do? Did you spike the bath? Come on, let's get out of here before you... Do your normal thing and mess everything up. What do you mean? I got a free bath for my owl. Speaking of which, how is Cerulean? The beautiful woman comes back in, holding the reins outside the door. And how's my good boy? Meow. No, oh, just what I thought. Amazing. Look at that sheen. Look at that majestic coat. You f- must, you look like I feel. It's amazing. Can I appraise the bath that the, uh, the elk got? Sure. I don't know if a praise would be the praise right. the quality. You, you, you could, It'd be perception. You don't have to make me roll. I'll, right I'll perception too. Sure, make perception. sure that he what? got an equal treatment to what I paid for. Basically, all I want to know is: did it? Act, did he actually get cleaned, or did water get dumped on him? Or I can't tell anything. But we'll see. A uh, total of twenty for Finn. Smooth thinks that he got an absolutely phenomenal bath with a total of an eleven. Sure. Okay. So, um, Navir, you see that Cerulean has a few bows in his fur and some bows tied around his uh, horn nubs. Does he look cleaner? Is he wet? He's not wet. Wait, well, even with but 11, I would be able to see that. He looks beautiful to you. He looks gorgeous. Uh, It was at least brushed then. uh, Was was he? Was was he brushed, though? Is that all I can tell is that the bows were put on? The bows were put on. That's the most noticeable thing that you see. Um, Getting closer, you do see that his elk fur appears to be slick. Okay, that's great. Good enough for me. Maybe he was licked. Who knows? Licked clean. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to think about that. Equal treatment. I paid for the same goods and services. Wait. Listen, sir. I don't want to cause trouble. I just need to know what happened here. Da, 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 da. Uh, how do I? I don't know what happened. Da, da, After da, all, da, he da, went da. into the bath and he came out the way he was. Da, 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 he wasn't da, da, like that da, da, when he da. went in. I can guarantee da, da. it. How do you know? Da, da, da. I've been traveling with him. Interesting. Yes, stop harassing the management. Yeah, Mast, what's your problem? Finnevere, do you still have a mirror on you? Always. Why? Mine. Have, take it. Take take the mirror out and and show Smoot his back. Why? It feels like a million bucks. It doesn't look like In a, a million bucks. That doesn't look like a billion dollars. Did I get a fresh new back skin? You could say that. Uh, well, but... It's a miracle <laughs> bath. It's a done backpack. Rummage through. Here you go. Do not break it. I, be tr- I tried to position the mirror. To show Smoot his back. My perception check, my back to the mirror. Sure, you can perception check. 23. You see. I would feel, too, if it looked off. Your skin is there, but it's kind of, like, weird because part of the skin, even though it is skin-colored, it looks really hard. I mean, it's no longer red and stinging. All right, fine. Uh, (laughs) Who knows? It could just be a big scab. Well, phenomenal service. Thank you all. All right. So, you guys head out of the bathhouse, and you see Alan Taylor at a food stall with coin in hand. And that is where we're going to end off this week's episode of The Gate Chronicles. Yay! 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 Thank you, foundlings, so much for listening to this week's episode of The Gate Chronicles. If you enjoyed this episode or you've been enjoying the podcast overall, please consider leaving us a review on iTunes, Podchaser, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also make sure that you share with somebody who you may think might enjoy our stories because you know what? We grow with you and because of you. I don't know how we grow with you. That's interesting. New, new thought, new thought. Put that on a shirt somewhere. We grow with you wherever you go. Okay, anyway. Also, in addition, if you want to support the podcast in other ways, you guys can go to our Patreon, where the link is in the description below, or go to bit.ly forward slash support MRPF. And on the Patreon, you can get access to things like early releases of episodes, GM notes, maps, and other things that we make for the podcast that only you get to access as a patron. Woo! 
yeah. So consider doing that. Or if you want, you can get merchandise from our website store by going to missingroleplayerfound.com. That's missing, R-O-L-L, playerfound.com. And make sure you follow us on our social medias, Twitter, Instagram, at RollFound, or join us in our Discord. The link is in the description below. All right, guys. Thank you, Foundlings, so much again for listening, and we will see you next, next week. Bye. 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 Hopefully Smoot's not a fish. But what if I'm a dragon? <laughs>